Hi everyone, Brenda Gustin here, and we're going to continue our discussion on bacterial growth, and I'm in section 6.3, and the first vocabulary word I have here is binary fission. And binary fission is just the process by which a bacterial cell copies its contents, primarily its ribosomes, its, you know, different molecules in there, and its DNA, its chromosome, and divides into two cells. Now you learned a little bit about cell division when you learned about eukaryotic cells, and you learned all the steps of mitosis and how all the chromosomes sort out. But remember, prokaryotic cells are simpler. They just have one chromosome, and so they don't have to go through such a fancy um, process. So thank goodness to bacteria for being simple, and they just um, copy their parts and make go from one cell to two. So here's an example, um, a diagrammatic example of binary fission. You just have a cell, it copies the chromosomes and other cell parts and um, divides into two cells. So in one generation, you start with one cell and you end up with two cells that are identical to that. They're identical to each other, they're identical to the original cell, okay? So that original cell no longer exists. Um, yeah, and that's what I just said right there. So when we're, cells are dividing, there's a, uh, an estimation of cell rate, um, the speed of cell division that we can do, and it's called generation time or doubling time. Uh, it means the same, both those words mean the same thing. I generally, generally use the term generation time. So generation time or doubling time is the amount of time it takes one cell to divide into two. And um, it gives you some examples of numbers here. The, um, it says, compared with the growth rates of most other living things, bacteria are notoriously rapid. They're quite fast. And they they're typically have generation times from about 30 to 60 minutes. So um, you can imagine, you know, the generation time in human population is about 20 years or more. And so... Um, Bacteria divide in 30 to 60 minutes. That's a pretty big deal. So here it says the shortest generation times can be about 10 to 12 minutes. And even bacteria like E. coli, depending on the conditions, are often able to divide that quickly depending on the conditions and the strain of bacteria. Uh, and that's one reason why we've studied E. coli so extensively, because it's easy to find. We can find all sorts of E. coli that don't cause diseases, but they also have these really short generation times, so it makes them easy to study in the laboratory. There are bacteria that have much longer generation times. Here's one, Mycobacterium leprae, that causes Hansen's disease. You might hear of that called leprosy, and that has a generation time of 10 to 30 days. Um, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, that causes tuberculosis, the respiratory disease, that has a generation time of about 12 hours, and that's still quite um, substantially longer than the 30 to 60 minutes, which is more typical. I give you an example here. It says Staphylococcus aureus, which is a common bacteria on our bodies, in our environments, and there is foodborne illness that's caused by that. It can have a generation time of 20 to 30 minutes, and that means that that bacteria um, if it's growing on food that's at an optimal temperature, it can grow pretty quickly. So leaving food out at room temperature and letting the food reach room temperature can get a lot of bacteria on it in a very short amount of time. Um, there's a calculation you can do, and I'm gonna come back to this, on how to calculate the number of cells you'll have after um, a certain number of generations. So, um, I can say if I, I um, want to, if I have a bacterial cell and it's gone through five generations, I can say I started with the bacterial cell. After one generation, I have two. Remember, it doubles at each generation. After two generations, I have four. After three generations, I have eight. After four, Four generations, I have 16, and after five generations, I have 32. So you could write all that out, but there's also an easy math problem you could do. Um, for that same cell, if I want to say, um, how many cells will I have after five generations? You do two to the number of generations. So two to the five also is 32. 
So you could write it out, but what if I had 24 generations? I wouldn't want to go 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32. That I kind of lose track. So I might say 2 to the 24th and do that on my calculator. Um, it has here, it says the exponent increases with each generation, and the number in the exponent is also the number of generations. This growth pattern is termed exponential. So we say bacteria grow exponentially. Okay. Um, the other thing when, again, don't, don't shut down because you're not into math. I, I promise you can understand this. But here it says, because the populations often contain very large numbers of cells, it's useful to express by the means of exponents or logarithms. So we might say this bacteria grow exponentially or we might say they grow logarithmically. It means the same thing. It means they're doubling with each generation. Okay, and so here's kind of a, a diagrammatic thing that shows you what a growth of a bacterial population looks like. Here's my one cell to two to four to eight to 16 to 32, on and on. And here they're showing you if I, you know, I've got zero generations, now after one generation or two to the one, I have two cells. There we go, number of cells, two cells, two to the two, four cells, two to the three, eight cells, okay? If I plot that on a graph, if I wanna plot time versus number of bacteria, it's going to look something like this. It's gonna look like, even if my bacteria are growing at a constant rate, it's going to, your graph line is gonna look like this. And that's because I start with one cell, I go to two. It takes the same amount of time for me to have 400,000 cells and go to 800,000 cells, but the distance between those two points is much higher. So right here, if I go from five to 10 cells, I barely see a difference in my increase in number. But if I go from 200,000 to 400,000, I can see an increase on my graph. So when you're graphing something that's growing exponentially, instead of having a linear y-axis you want a logarithmic axis now don't again don't get bogged down with the math but what this what it does is it just changes the way that the numbers um, are plotted on the side here and so now when i graph from one to um one to two to two to four and on you can see that these numbers have been adjusted to make it so those same, when I plot my growth, it's gonna look like a straight line. So on a logarithmic graph, when I plot my growth and the rate is constant, the line should be steady. Okay, there they talk a little bit more about binary fission. Um, here it's just talking about, they do a math problem right here. Um, if we start, let's see. Okay, so it says, um, we'll use the example of Staphylococcus aureus to calculate how many cells will be present in an egg salad sandwich after it sits in the car for four hours. Okay, um, first thing we need to know, it says, is we need to know the generation time. And, um, they're telling you right here that the generation time for this bacteria is 20 minutes. So if the sandwich has been sitting around for four hours and we have bacteria growing in it at doubling every 20 minutes, what's the generation time? Let's see. So in one hour, there's three 20s, right? So four, four hours or 240 minutes divided by 20 minutes is going to give us 12 generations. So that's when you take your formula. You take 2 to the number of generations, so 2 to 12, and that's going to give you 4,096 cells. Okay. So let me just reiterate this if you didn't get it. I have um, my bacteria are growing for four hours or 240 minutes and they have a generation time of 20 minutes. So that means 
240 minutes divided by 20 minutes, that means we have 12 generations. So 2 to the number of generations, 2 to the 12, and stick that in your calculator, and you're going to get 4,096 cells. So that means if there was one bacterial cell in your sandwich, after 4 hours you'd have 4,000 cells. Down here it says, oh, but what if we started off with 10 cells? If you start off with 10 cells, then you multiply that 4,096 4, cells by 10, and you would have 40,000 cells in your sandwich after 4 hours. And 10 bacterial cells isn't very many, so it's easy to come by. So um, there's ways that we can kind of predict like how much bacteria will grow. When you hear things about people saying don't leave um, refrigerated foods out for more than an hour, um, they're paying attention to these generation times and how fast bacteria grow and how many bacteria you would need to make you sick. Okay, so here we're talking about um, bacterial growth. So let's see how do we look at bacterial growth in the um, laboratory. We're going to look at the great rate of population growth in the laboratory. And we do this by creating something that we call the growth curve. And um, what happens in a, what we're doing with the growth curve is we're watching the growth of bacteria in a culture and looking at um, when is it growing its fastest, when it's growing its slowest. And um, they're telling you here you can put some bacteria in a broth, um, you can incubate it, you can sample it periodically and count the number of cells at different times. And that's what, what they did here. And, and um, you can look at that as talking about kind of the method of how this was done. But what you end up with is something that we call a growth curve. And so here's that log number of cells. So if the, num the line is going straight, that's representing the growth rate. So here the cells, the, the culture isn't growing very much. Here it's growing a lot. Here it's not growing very much, and here it's actually declining. There's four stages to a normal growth curve. They're called the lag phase, the exponential growth. That's also called the log phase, and I'm going to call it that. But this is where you're going to calculate your um, generation time. This is where they're growing their fastest. Fortunately, when bacteria are growing, something eventually goes sour. Um, it might be waste products are accumulated. It might be that there's too much competition. It might be there's not enough food. Um, all sorts of things could happen. You're running out of oxygen and your number of cells is going to, the, the amount of cells being produced is going to be about the same number of cells that are dying. And so you're going to kind of get a leveling off of your growth, and that's called stationary phase. Now, the reason why I say this is a good thing is because if we didn't, if our bacterial cultures kept growing and growing, um, we would be just engulfed by piles and piles of bacteria. But you can imagine, you know, the bacteria on our skin, there's something that's going to stop them from growing. Usually they're running out of nutrients. So too much competition. And so you don't have our bacteria on, that are associated with their bodies probably aren't always growing as fast as they possibly can because they have a lot of competition. So the lag phase, the log phase, and then we go, things start going bad. They're running out of food. And so we're going to go into this stationary phase. And eventually conditions are going to deteriorate enough that you're going to have more bacterial cells dying than cells that are being produced. So we call this the death phase. And this is a typical growth curve. Here, what it's giving you a little summary at the bottom. During the lag phase, um, here it's telling you, you have a few live cells. So you've started your culture, you don't have a lot in there. Even though these cells aren't actively dividing, they're actually um, metabolically active. They're copying their DNA, they're copying their other cell parts, and getting ready to divide. So these cells are just kind of adapting to the environment they've just been put in. Once they, you know, get started, once their DNA is copied and they can start doing binary fission, we're going to have log phase. And here it says you have many live cells. So this is the, the most prosperous stage in this bacterial culture. Um, every 
generation, they're going to double in number. So um, what we can plot this growth curve if we knew what those numbers were. But eventually, like I said, at the end of log phase or exponential growth phase, um, they're going to run out of food or run out of oxygen or create too much waste. And they're going to enter stationary phase. And here it's saying in stationary phase, we're starting to accumulate dead cells. And um, these cells, there's still a lot of live cells. They're metabolically active, but we still have, we're starting to get um, an increased number of dead cells. When the number of dead cells um, exceed the number of living cells, then we enter into death phase. And that just depends on the conditions present. Um, oh, here's a kind of a cool picture. It looks like there's a bunch of fish tanks that are lined up. And this cloudiness in the fish tanks is representative, representative of bacteria growing in there. So more bacteria, the cloudier they get. Here they're talking about some of the things I just said. Um, there is some practical Im importance to this. Um, a lot of times in the research situations, you might want to study the way bacteria grow and know um, different things about them. But in our bodies, um, we do know that when bacteria are growing faster, that um, the antimicrobial agents are going to work better. So if you're going to try to treat an infection, it's easier to kill the bacteria when they're growing quickly than when they're starting to enter these um, stationary and death phases. So just because when you have a lot of bacteria that are dividing quickly, it's easier to find something about them that, um, that slows them down. At that point, I think um, I'm going to stop right here and go on to the next section.